doing some crazy thing today. Uh, I'll give everybody a few minutes to join in. Uh, one of our members has finished the uh, Warm Embrace Shawl, and she posted it in the group, and it came out absolutely fantastic. Now, um, we are about halfway done with it, so um, the blocking video will not be for a couple more weeks. Uh, but I did want to bring up what you will need. Hi, Leslie. What you guys will need for blocking. Um, the blocking mats, the ABC mats, the kids mats, whatever you want to use is fine to block with. Um, you can even lay this out on your bed on a towel, a couple towels if you want to, the way that we are going to block. Because um, we're just going to do a wet block. That way it's not going to mess up your fabric. If you are using the blocking boards, whether it be the ABC, 1, 2, 3, hi Erica. Um, I had gone on to Handsome Fibers Knitting and Crochet Supplies. Um, they have a... Um, they actually have a Ravelry link and a Facebook link, and um, so I ordered from them, and um, I got the rainbow blockers, and these have, these are the Knitter's Pride uh, rainbow blockers, and um, It comes with instructions on how to use them and how to pin and if you're doing a shawl, um, how you can like weave string uh, through your points and block all of your points down. So this is a really nice set. So I ordered that and I ordered, and I'm terrible with this name, the Steppen. No step line. Uh, Chiagu makes it. It's also called a nest stick. Um, and what it's for is winding balls of yarn. So if you have a hank, you can wind balls on this. And you start your yarn around it and then you wrap up and down and twist. And then you can pull your ball of yarn off of here. And that will help you, um, if you do not have a yarn winder, uh, luckily I was gracious enough to be gifted one. Um, so that's been pretty interesting. Um, and I will be doing a video on working with the um, Nomad yarns. And I ordered the eggshell and each one of the hanks comes with a little tag and it says it's 70% superwash merino 30% nylon for the eggshell anyway it's a sock finger weight it's made in Peru it talks about what it's made from and has little tags I actually will be adding the little tags back onto my hanks which is why I took them off so carefully and I will be putting the color um, on mine um, so I took my hanks and I rolled them into cake, as many of you seen last week. I had ten of them here. Um, I see some people are getting lost on Facebook, I think, since I'm not in the group and I'm on the page. Um, so, uh, many of you seen that I had those rolled and I was dyeing them and I shared it. A sneak peek and I used the wine an emerald an indigo and the aqua and there are two different dye methods out there hi Gretchen hi Gloria I will be posting and talking I will do a video on how I did these because there's a little controversy on how you should do it. Um, 
like one site tells you one way, one site tells you another way, so I'm going to tell you um, I tried both ways, and the difference is this one I dyed with just the water and the vinegar, and I will be showing this, um, showing how to do this. And if you want this, it has more of a resistance to it. And I did dye this in a cake form. Um, this has more of a resistance. This is the wine color, and it is fantastic. I love this color. This is the emerald color, and it is so much greener than this camera is even going to pick up. Hi, Melinda. It's got, like, deep sections of emerald through here. It's really, think like Wizard of Oz emerald. It's really pretty. And then I did the indigo and that come out super dark. And like I said, you still have resist when you do it in a cake, but the ones that I did with the, let me get the other color. Um, and this one I did, which was an aqua the aquamarine and like I said the camera just cannot do these colors justice at all on what they actually look like they are so much brighter and I don't really think that there is a way that I'm going to get these to show up as bright as they are um, now these ones are more of a ombre effect there's the like a lighter green and the emerald darker green and it come out um it came out fantastic the aqua and this color the indigo now these are more of a um they're more of an ombre effect whereas this one that was dyed differently it has the ombre effect, but there's much more resistance in here. And the difference is one I added soap to the water and one I did one way I did not. So um, Chris said, oh my, I found you. I remember you were live on Wednesday, so I'm so happy. Thank you. I'm glad you're you're here. Hi, Melinda. She says, yeah, because it looks teal. It's... It's kind of teal but kind of there the teal that they have I haven't bought but it looks more green and it's much lighter um, the aqua or it's much darker the aqua I was surprised because it's like a real light color um, and I'll be showing the bottles in the video that I do but I was really surprised at the difference in this and the resistance how much resistance I got because all of these were rolled into a cake. So the resistance between this and this is so much different. You know, you can kind of see this is darker and this is lighter, but it's it's actually got the um, emerald through the whole thing, where this one is more like um, a rose. Um, it's got the really deep wine and then the pale pale pink so the resistance was much different um hey rita um everyone please remember to like the page before leaving so you'll be notified of posts and lives yes please like the page and follow us um and that way you'll get the notifications um the reason that we started the page was because so many people wanted lives and didn't have to, um, when they wanted to rewatch them with people that aren't necessarily in the group, they were having problems finding them. So this way we can do the live and it's live on Facebook and, you know, we can link it into the group and to YouTube so it makes things a little bit easier. But yeah, I'm super excited about the color ones. Um, Erica said it's beautiful. I like the wine one better. I am kind of torn. Um, I do like the fact that the wine one has such a resistance for the cake. Um, 
and I do like the fact that I did get a little bit of a resist on the outside of the cake and the inside of the cake but it is much more of an ombre effect and this is more of a variegated effect so I definitely think it's what you're going for um, I absolutely love how the wine one came out and like I said you can really see the resist on this one where this one you can kind of see there's darker greens and lighter greens for this emerald um, you know you can see this one's this here this is wrapped dark and this is this is lighter and that's the difference so um, Melinda said the wine one looks kind of stonewashed yeah and that's what I said I think that I'm really going to show both um, how I achieved both I'm going to talk about them and show the skeins um, I am going to be doing a video where I dye um, another uh, cake and um, I'm going to talk about the difference and that way when you guys get your yarns and you want to dye them you can know what to do um, so that you can get the look that you want um, I actually am going to be making something so um, I kind of wanted them to be the same but then you know I did this one and I was like well you know the other person explained to do it this way Hi Jennifer, you know, and the other, and the the written one was done different. Hi Gidget, was done differently. So I think it's, you know, I'm going to note both um, so that y'all can see. And I, like I said, I really like the difference in between two of them. Um, I do like the fact that I got a lot of resistance with the wine. Um, I do not have a nitty, not or... Um, which is what you wind your yarn on so that you can make hanks again. So I ended up using, um, I have a picture frame in the living room that's like 24 inches long. So what I did was I put um, some saran wrap around that and I wrapped my yarn around it, which is why these hanks, when I wrap them up, they're not very big and they're not wrapped well because I've never wrapped a hank until now. But like I said, you can definitely see the difference um, and like I said, this one almost looks like a teal, but it is not. This is a beautiful emerald green, and I wish I could get the color to just show, but it's, you know, the camera. You know how they are. This aqua um, came out absolutely stunning, too. And when you put them up against each other, you can definitely see that the aqua is definitely different than the green, and the indigo came out really nice too the colors are definitely dark um, that you get with these when I wanted jewel tones which is what I wanted that is exactly what I got with this so you know and my husband said well why don't you just buy the hanks of yarn hi Linda why don't you just buy the hanks of yarn that are already dyed well what happens is when you buy the hanks that are already dyed a lot of them are $25, $35, $45 dollars a piece. So, um, that was the thing was, I wanted to try this at home and I wanted to do something where I wasn't going off and buying something expensive as far as the dyes go because there's so many. So, with the RIT dye, you can get it at Walmart for like $3 for a bottle. And a bottle has eight ounces in it now. Um, so the hanks of yarn are like six dollars and ninety cents at Nomad for the eggshell and for they have another one that is called um, Snowdrift. And if you buy a ten pack, they're a little bit cheaper. So instead of paying sixty nine dollars for a ten pack, you get it for like. $59 so you end up saving like a dollar a skein and um, let me get the bag out and they come like this so you get 10 hanks so you know ultimately for $60 I got 10 hanks of yarn I bought five colors of dye, 
which are three dollars a piece so I spent another fifteen dollars there so for under eighty dollars I have ten hanks of yarn that are colored and I have enough dye because these are 100 grams. If you have two, I wanted to do two at a time. So 200 grams is less than a half a pound. So for two ounces of dye, so I can dye four different times with this dye. So it came up, and I'm so excited to for the different colors. Um, and like I said, these, I cannot tell you how much how much brighter these actually are in person back here you can kind of see this one a little bit it is still more green than it's actually coming up it's it's emerald when i said emerald it's like emerald city emerald and the aqua is gorgeous too i was kind of surprised um of the colors that I got and like I said this ultimately works out to be less than $80 I got 10 hanks of yarn that's colored the colors that I want and it took me like it takes about a half an hour to dye them even more if you don't do solids yes I could even do more if I didn't do all solid colors um and there's enough dye left over in the pot that I really think you could get more out of that if you wanted a lighter color, if you didn't want something so bright. Um, but I do not have two, I didn't have a five gallon bucket or two gallon jugs to like put all of this dye in. So, you know, like I said, I, I dumped mine out, but I, it's still, God, it was, they're gorgeous colors. Um, but I will be doing a video on how to do it. And, um, I might do the next set. I'm going to do this video. This next video is going to be on the cake, dyeing the cake. And then I think I'm going to do a set that are Hanks, dye the Hanks and see how they come out. Um, so I'm super excited about that. These colors have come out absolutely fantastic. I didn't, you know, I've seen colors you know, with some of the expensive dyes, and I've seen some colors with the Kool-Aid, and they're more muted, and I really like the jewel tones, so I was, you know, kind of weighed my options between the food coloring and the the uh, Kool-Aid dyes, and I thought, you know, I really want something that's going to be dark, so I went with the, the Rit dye, and I'm really impressed with the quality and the color that I got. Um, like I said, it's a shame I can't get them the picture so well, but they are gorgeous. Um, Leslie said, you're inspiring me to try this. You know, I think we're all kind of bored at this point and need to do something to expand your brain. Um, and I was really shocked because um, Nomad shipped yarn out and got it to me within like three days. So from the time that I ordered late day and like two, two days later, I got my yarn. So I was really impressed with it. Um, I'm really impressed with the company and I can't wait to work these up. Um, I'm super excited about them. Uh, I really like the colors. I was kind of inspired by like, um, kind of like Mardi Gras colors. Uh, they didn't, they don't really have a gold that I wanted and I really didn't want to mix colors. Hi, Christy. Hi, Amy. So, um, I didn't want to get into mixing colors. I wanted to see how deep the actual color was going to come out. And I was really shocked because when you buy a color and the label says it is this color, um, that picture on the label is that, that color on the label is pretty darn close to what you're going to get. So, um... Like I said, I do like the resist that I got with this one, which was just the dye and the vinegar. And I absolutely love the ombre effect I got with the dye and the vinegar and the soap. Um, and like I said, I will um, show you 
the difference when I dye the next two cakes, but I'm, I'm loving how these come out, and uh, I'm kind of really impressed with it. I thought, you know, I'll try it, and, you know, 10 hanks and $60 worth of yarn, and we'll see what happens, because either way, I knew I was going to like the colors that I picked, so I was like, well, you know, if it doesn't take the first time, I can always go back and, you know, unwrap it as a cake and dye it again or whatever, but I'm, I'm super impressed with the colors that I got. I, I can't say enough. Like, I'm really loving Rit dye. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. So, um, the cakes, once I did them, um, and dyed them, uh, I pulled them out and rinsed them. The vinegar sets the dye. Um, when you rinse them out, you get a little bit of dye. Um, so, but I noticed that even if you don't rinse them very well and you wrap them, um, you're not getting the dye. It's not coming through onto your hands or anything. So, um, I wouldn't say you have to like keep rinsing until the water's completely clear. I just rinsed once or twice um, with some soapy water and then wrapped and they were perfect. Um, so I'm I'm so excited. Like I said, these these yarns come out fantastic. And you know, I've never really worked with a super wash wool before either. So I was kind of worried because I seen some videos where people were dying and they felted and they did terrible things and acrylic melted and it was bad. So I was like, well, you know, let's try this and see what happens. And these are not very fuzzy. Um, they're not really fuzzy at all. And they have been uh, taken from the hank, wrapped on the cake winder, then dyed, and then while they were still wet, I took them and wrapped them into hanks and then let them dry that way. So, um, Erica said I'm doing Easter egg pellets next. Yeah, I think the Easter egg pellets would be nice as well. Um, it's not close enough to Easter, so I do not have any here. And I think that... We spend a lot of money on acrylic yarns and yarns, and we don't like the feels of them. And I think that this is a great way to expand, mess around so that you can get some colors that you want, and um, expand your knowledge and give you a beautiful palette to work with. Because Rit Dye has so many different colors, and they have a chart where it tells you how to mix, like, 500 colors, so I'm super, super impressed, um, and the Rit dye, someone was saying that it smelled, um, it does have a smell to it, it's nothing that's like, I have severe allergies, and I, it didn't bother me to work with it, um, and then, like I said, even the ba the batches that I used the soap in, I just used um, laundry soap. So when you're working with that, you can smell the laundry soap. Um, these yarns don't even really... You can kind of smell the dye a pinch, but nothing... It's not... Like, I really got to put it up to my nose to, to smell it. I am really impressed with this. I definitely am glad... And it's definitely inspired me to buy another 10 hanks to, to play with. And I think that I'm probably going to do a baby blanket with these. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Jan. Yeah, I'm so super excited about this. And like I said, I definitely will be doing a video on how to dye um, these yarns. And it, like I said, for 80 bucks, I got 10 hanks, five different colors, um, and all it took was a gallon of vinegar. Um, I didn't even use the whole gallon of vinegar, but I bought a gallon because I knew I was going to need a cup per, 
um, every two hanks. And I'm super impressed and I was really shocked about the difference between using soap in the water and getting the ombre and not using the soap and getting a variegated um, Erica says, hmm, ain't you glad I talked to you about it? Yes, yeah, she's a bad influence on my my spending. I was so good through most of this uh, being home, and now it kind of went a little bit out of bounds here. With a yarn swift and a, a not, nitty knotty, and, uh, and now another club. So, <laughs> but yeah. I, I absolutely love these, and I love how they worked up, and I will be doing a video on it, so um, look for it. It's going to be, I'm going to film it, and then I think we'll link it to the group, and we'll link it here, but I think we're going to put it up on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm so excited about this, and like I said, each one of these that I do, I'm going to put the card back on, and I'm going to put the color of dye that I used. Can I order some Jessica specials? Sure you can. You just let me know what colors you want and we'll talk about pricing. She said that. Lisa said that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited about this. Um, you know, and that's the thing, like, I've gone online so many times and Erica does, she does knitting, she does loom knitting, she does, she does everything. So... You know, I've bought some hanks of yarn in the past, and when they're wrapped up, they look fantastic. You know, you got this big blue side and a big pink side and black on the tip, and it's it's pretty, but when you knit it up, it doesn't work out that way. It's not like, okay, well, this is green, and then this is black, and then this is pink. It works up that, like, green, black, pink. It's more of a variegated, and to me, I... I'm not a variegated yarn person, and that's just my preference. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. They are gorgeous colors. I have seen some stunning, absolutely stunning work done with them. But for me personally, that's just not a, a Jessica thing. Um, but, you know, these variegated and ombre colors I got, I'm really, really impressed with them. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm never going to make a cake for somebody or a, a hank that's got the different colors in it, but I'm so super excited about this, and I'm so excited to see how this works up, and actually, um, people seeing me dyeing the yarn that came over to visit actually already put in an order for a baby blanket with dyed yarns. So, I'm super excited about that too. Um... There's just, it's, it's so exciting. Like, there's so much stuff going on that's, you know, I, I'm the type that I can't just sit here and not do anything, and it, you know, I think all of us get to a point where there's only so much of work, and then doing your whips, and housework, and stuff that you can do, and it's nice to branch out and learn something. You know, I used to sit and read, and, you know, you can crochet, but, you, you know, you can't do that every night. So it's nice to have something to do that's out of the ordinary. And I, like I said, I'm absolutely thrilled about this. I cannot wait. Um, hi, Mary. Hi, Rita. I cannot wait to do a few more colors. Um, I actually am probably going to order a few more colors online as well because... You know, the grocery store around here only carries so many of the Rit dyes, and I'm so excited. And like I said, ultimately, you can get, you know, it, it says two ounces. It's four ounces for half a pound, two cakes, or two 100-gram hanks are less than a half a pound. So, I really think that you could probably fit a third one in there and still get a great color. Because I still, you know, Rit Dye is one of them things that it's not one of the ones where if you watch any of the the dyeing com um, videos on YouTube or you go in and you do research Rit Dye, um, it still has dye in the water. It's not one of the ones that you put your stuff in and then your water is clear. So, I still think there was enough dye in the water that I could have went back 
and even done a few more skeins in there and got lighter colors and it, that would have been absolutely fantastic as well um so but yeah um like i said this i'm absolutely in love with this emerald green the blues i love how all this came out it has so much color and the aqua the color on the label was really light so i was picturing like a really light um think like mint green but to the teal side is what i was picturing and I really didn't get that except for where the light, light section is where the cake was wrapped. But I still got great color in there. And I'm really impressed with this as well. It reminds me of rose petals. You know how when they start falling off of your, um, they have that white on them and then the, the edge of the leaf will turn like almost black. That's what it reminds me of. It's beautiful. I absolutely love it. I think that's what I'm probably going to make something for myself. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited about this. And uh, I already have people asking me to dye some up and and ship it out. And so I'm excited. <laughs> I might need my own she shed to do all this. It will be very exciting though. Um, so... As I was saying, too, about the shawl, everybody is working on the Warm Embrace shawl. It is coming out absolutely fantastic. I love the um, Hobby Lobby yarns that we're using. Their yarns are absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't say enough about Hobby Lobby. Um, they're, I love how soft and the quality of their yarn is. And um, I ended up ordering the Knitter's Pride blockers and that's what I'll be using to block Erica said I'm thinking socks and a loom knitted shawl oh that would be nice too <laughs> um but yeah this is what I'm going to be using you do not need to have blockers to block you don't I'm going to show you how to do it that it's going to lay flat while it's wet and you can just hand manipulate it um, but I will be using the blockers. Um, we are going to be doing this in a method that you do not have to worry about. The steam getting too hot or your iron getting too close and ruining the months of work that we've put into this. Because the this is going to run about four months. Um, I think it's going to be like 16, 16 to 20 weeks. I could have used some warm socks today. Yeah, it's chilly here too. I hated it. It rained. For any of our newbies that are joining us, does anybody have questions about what to look for in a graph? Um, any of the hooks that we're using? Um, I know that we posted a chart in the group looks like this and I know y'all can't read it from out there but it has the metric sizes and the US sizes and the UK sizes and then the Japan sizes of hooks and I did um, I know it's backwards on here but I did do jumbo hooks as well so I go all the way up on this chart to the 35 millimeter which is a Y hook. Bonnie said it's so hot here in shorts and I got sunburn on my shoulder. I'm so jealous. Um, but yeah, we did a chart for this. And someone was saying they cannot get... They ordered the Knitter's Pride hooks, but they're upset because um, they only go up to an L. No, they do not. Um, the Knitter's Pride Tunisian dream set goes up to an L. If you order the Knitter's Pride Tunisian ginger set, it gives you the 9mm, 10mm, and 12mm. So you can get the bigger hooks with this set. If you have the Knitter's Pride Tunisian dream set, you can order these three sizes separately they fit your cables they will do absolutely everything you need them to do 
And like I said, I cannot say enough about the Knitter's Pride sets. I absolutely love the length of the cables. I love, you know, my first set was the Knitter's Pride um, Dream set because they didn't have this set yet. And I have had that set going on six years and it is still going strong. I have not had one thing happen to it. Um, I did get one set and one of my hooks were broken E and they immediately replaced them for me. There was no questions, no, no nothing. It was, it, their customer service has been absolutely fantastic. Um, their hooks are amazing. Um, the over, I will note that with the Knitter's Pride Tunisian Dream set, they have the cabled hooks that are color coded for size. With the Knitter's Pride Ginger set, the hooks or the cables are black. They're all the same color, which to some people that's, you know, it bothers them. Some people it doesn't. They don't really care. You know, you can eyeball it. So, um, getting that as a Mother's Day gift. Can't wait. I love them. I do. Um, I can't say enough about Knitter's Pride. I have used their stuff for like ever and you know even just like you know their blocking pins you know if I want the bigger hooks I'll use the Chiagu um, because I like the fact that the cables are held on with grommets like a grommet and woo there you guys go and it holds it on fantastic and this is my U um, hook this thing is huge, and um, I should be getting my other Tunisian um, straight hook in in the next month or two. It just got finished. It's about five and a half foot long, <laughs> so I'm super, super excited about that. I cannot wait. It's going to be featured behind me, so y'all will see it. I'm so excited. Chris says, I have a question. Of course, it's on color changes. I did see your color change of changing two colors. I think I will use it when I start my graph game, but I was wondering if you would do a video. Oh, goodness gracious. Of like five or six color changes in a row. Eric said, holy crap. Yes, it's huge. Um, I can do another one with some color changes in a row. That one video that I have does do a few, I think it does a few rows. The there's Because there's three different videos. There's the one or two stitch color change. There is the um, eye-shaped chart that I did. And there is also a... I think there's there's one when the pearl stitch is up against your border because you're doing the honeycomb and connecting them that color change so there's actually a couple videos Chris um, but yeah I can do another one um, the hardest thing I think for people to remember is that you are doing the stitches twice so what happens is you have the two vertical bars and when the color change before the color change comes up you're picking up both bars and yes, it kind of pulls them together a little bit. But then when you do the next stitch, you're using, you know, you make sure you have to pick up this outside stitch. Because if you don't, you're going to miss it. And that's where a lot of people miss picking up the second stitch because you use the second stitch twice. Um, I thought I was getting a 7 millimeter hook to add to my set. So bummed. I could have sworn it said interchangeable. It came. It's just a regular Tunisian seven millimeter hook I'll keep it and try again <laughs> lol uh yeah that's one thing too I really um you really have to check because I've had a few people that have ordered the knitters pride um knitters pride dreams hooks and knitters pride Tunisian dreams hooks Knitter's Pride makes a package that is the same exact, but it's just regular crochet hooks. So you have to make sure that when you look at the little package, that it's got the picture with the little um, 
cables because if you don't then you're getting the regular crochet hooks so I've seen so many people get them and they've they've sent them back and been like I've ordered the wrong thing um, and then you wait to get them and then realize they're the wrong thing so it's very upsetting so make sure when you order the hooks that you see on the package it will show the cables and that's how you know you're getting the right ones um, Chris says, I know what you mean. Five or six would be a pain. No, it's 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 not really that it's a pain. What I'm saying is when you get to the color change, you're going to do, for your last stitch before the color change, you're going to go under two. And then for the next stitch, you're going to pick up, you're going to get your new yarn and your new and you're going to pick up two there. You need to make sure that you don't miss that one stitch. So it's it's kind of one of them things like when I started doing it, I would make it a point to be like, okay, I need five green. So you go and you do four green, and then you do your fifth one with both of the stitches, and then you're like, okay, now I got the... I got the last stitch done. Now I need to do the color change. And then the color change, you're like, I need to pick up that second stitch again. So that's what I, I had to stop for each color change and remember that I got to use that again. I don't like doing side-by-side -side color change. I feel like I get lost sometimes. It is. It's one of the things that you need a lot of concentration and um, quiet. So... Um, if the grandkids are over or <laughs> my husband's got the TV on loud or whatever, it ain't happening. Um, it becomes second nature, but it's one of the things, like um, one of the girls told me, she took the video and hooked her computer up to the TV set and played it. And then she rewound it and then hit play again every time she got to the color change. So that's what she said she did for hers was just loaded it up on the TV and then played it a couple times and then she said like after she got to the, the third row she was like I got this <laughs> so um yeah I would try watching the video a couple times and seeing because like I said there is the one or two color one or two stitch color change video and that's where a lot of people seem to get lost because if you're doing a one stitch color change you're literally going across picking up the last two stitches for the last hook or last stitch of that and then you're doing the color change in those next two stitches but it's the first one it's the second one of the last stitch that you did you're using those two and then you're doing the next two so really it's like doing six together it's like six stitches but it's because you're using these two and then this two, and then this two, because of the one stitch color change, um, which is why a reason I don't like the one stitch color changes, unless they are right on top of each other, that you have a row that goes up, they become very thin, and you lose stuff, and that's another reason, too, why we talk about when you purchase a graph, or you make your own graph, if you go into Stitch Fiddle, and you make your own graph, or you use whatever site you guys want to use, Make sure you go in and you check for the broken lines. All of these little blocks need to be connected horizontally and vertically. You cannot have a diagonal connection where this is connected and this is connected, but it's connected diagonally. You need a block where you can literally go over and down and over. You should be able to take a pencil and go up and down and up and down and up and down around your whole pattern. And if you see one where you can't go up, to connect or you can't go across to connect then you need to either put one here or put one here and whatever aesthetically looks better to you a lot of times if it's an outline I like to go on the outside because then it keeps my color on the inside just as wide um, but like I said when you when you check these you need to make sure you do not have any diagonal color changes I have seen so many groups that sell designs like that and then people make them in the group and they're like, hey, what did I do wrong? Or, hey, can you look at this graph for me? Will this work for Tunisian? I ordered it and it says it's for Tunisian and I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, no. You need to go in 
and clean this up so you're not going to be able to follow the written for this. And um, that's why we don't really promote designers because there are so many that say they know what they're doing and they really don't. And then there are some that are absolutely fantastic. And a few people will message me and say, hey, can you put me in touch with somebody because I want something intricate and I can't figure out Stitch Fiddle. And then we will put you in touch with one of the few designers that we actually do um, work with. I'll have a look at the one or two color changes, but not like five different colors. You don't really have to do this, but I would sure be really happy. <laughs> yeah, I will. I'll see what I can get done. Um. I have a few things coming up. I got to figure out life's kind of going on now that everything's kind of opening back up in the state. My car's got to go into the shop and I've got some grocery shopping that I got to do because I'm very rural. So it's not like, oh, I'm just going to go to the bus stop and pop on a bus. And it's a long walk to town from where I am. So, um, yeah, I do have a few things going on, but I will get a video up um do we have any questions about the hooks um about anything that's going on um i did post two cows that are going on for blankets their practice pieces that you guys will be sewing together um I really would like to do one. I am not one for wanting to sew things together. So I think if I do one, it's going to be more of an entrelock style where um, we were to get gauge and then do our blocks and then connect like corner to corner entrelock because there's no sewing. And I know that that is the main complaint that um, a bunch of the people that we've pulled in here are like, I really like doing the small blocks. They're fantastic for washcloths and whatnot to learn to stitch, but I do not sew them together so they sit in a um, they sit in a bin. So um, I definitely would do something that is either one piece or we could do um, as like corner to corner entrelock with the bigger squares. Um, if we did decide to do that, um, right now we have the shawl going on and there is another one in the works that's going to be a triangle shawl and there's something else going on and hopefully if I can get everything done, I'm going to, the states are starting to open back up. Um, there's going to be a small Tunisian retreat down in South Carolina. So, um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, let's see. Do we have any questions in here? Am I missing something that you guys want to know about? Um, is there something in the group you guys would like to see that we don't have in there? Is everybody finding everything okay in the group? Is anybody lost? They can't find the videos or they can't find the files that we have. Um, and as always, Erica, Angela, and I are always just a message away. Um, and we, uh, we do sleep, but <laughs> when we're on, you know, we'll answer you as soon as we get back on. Um, because I know everybody, this is like a global thing around the world. This is not just everybody is in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. So, uh, I do get people that message me at like 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning while I'm sleeping. And I shut my phone off so you guys don't have to worry about, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I think I woke you up. Um, so, if I'm on, it's because I'm awake. <laughs> Can't sleep. Um... Hope said the videos are really helpful. Well, thank you very much. Um, hopefully, we will be getting those onto the YouTube channel as well. Yes, and like Erica said, if you are new, I suggest starting with the units. There is at the top of the page a little tab, and it does say units, and you can work your way through those, and those are extremely helpful for finding everything as well.
Corey said she's excited for the holiday weekend, camping and crocheting and working on my shawl and Tunisian in the round project. Um, I would like to do a Tunisian in the round project, but I want it to be a pattern that um, I fall in love with. I have found that with me, I'm like a go big or go home girl. Um, I don't usually start with something that I don't like. If I don't love it, then I pick it up and I don't stick with it. So, um, I think I'm probably going to do, um, I think I'm actually going to do the Death Flake. Um, it's a pattern that's on Ravelry. It's available for free. It's a knitting pattern. And it's like a snowflake with a skull in the center, but it doesn't really look like, um scary thing. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I think that's what I'm going to start with. And um, I think it was Debbie Powers. She did a blog on it and then her blog sat and she started, I think she sold Tupperware or sold some stuff and she kind of got away from it and didn't really pick it up. So um, she ended up taking her blog down and then she advertised the blanket on, I googled it, um, it's a craft, like, it's just a craft site, um, and she doesn't have, like, the tutorial or anything else with it, um, but I like the fact that she started out with just such a small circle, um, so, I'm, I kind of like that. Um, joined a group called Sisterhood of the Wine. You make baskets containing wine and goodies. I'm making coasters to put under the wine glasses using Tunisian. You pick the people in your area at random and anonymously leave the basket. Well, that's cute. Mary said, thank you for you guys for all you were doing. Thank you. Uh, so, Bonnie, I'm jealous of the weather you got. So, um, but yeah, I really, you know, I really wish that there was a way that I could give you guys, like, the actual vision of color uh, on these skeins that I made. They're, they really are, they pop and you know, like I said, if you guys decide to do this, know that the color that's on the outside is what you're going to get. And I actually am kind of excited because since I went and got the the colors that I got, I picked up a charcoal. And I was kind of hoping that I would get a gray. Um, I actually went and got a black. I would really like to see if I can achieve... Hi, Terry. Hi, Tara. I really would like to see if I can achieve the black because I was a little hesitant in the beginning because I was kind of worried that the writ dyes would not come out right. But, like I said, with these colors, I cannot tell you guys how vivid and how bright these are. They are absolutely just eye-poppingly colorful and even with the resist that I got with this one I really like it it reminds me of rose petals when your roses get older and the petals start falling off because this is such a deep deep burgundy color and this is a pink and it's the color is absolutely fantastic and this is like I said I will do I will talk to you when I do the video on both how to get this color and how to get this color. So this video we're going to do and we're going to put up on YouTube, but I'm super excited about it. Um, I don't think that I will be buying Angora rabbits or um, llamas or any sheep right now to be trying to spin my own wool, but I thought that this would be an absolutely fantastic way to start. And for you guys that wonder, this is the... When I wrapped my hanks, I put the string back around them 
that I had cut off so that when I unwrap them I have the I know like this is the end where the tail is so but like I said these colors that we got are just so bright and so they're fantastic I absolutely love them I cannot wait to do the next color um, and I picked up purple and black so I'm I'm so excited um, and I, I think I will be doing the next set in Hanks, dyeing them in Hanks and seeing how that comes out. Um, I kind of am interested um, in the resist as well. Um, yeah, this is, I'm excited about how these are coming out. And uh, I probably am going to make up enough to, to sell a few. <laughs> so, um, I should be getting in. I ordered a Hank Winder. And what else did I order? Oh, a little bag for it to hold it. So I'm excited about that as well. Um, this has kind of opened up, a, it's kind of like almost like a new craft. It's still crochet, but you know, the, the gratification of working up your own yarn so that you can do whatever colors you want for a project, I think is super exciting. Um, does anybody have any questions so far about the hooks or the winders or um, blocking pins? You know, I talked about them. Um, I'm so excited about this stuff. I just, I can't tell you enough. Um, the ball winder that I have is the Lasis, L-A-C-I-S, yarn ball winder too. And when I got it, I was a little afraid to pull this piece. And you kind of got to pull it a pinch, like, harder than you would think and it will lock it in place because my arm kept falling down and I wasn't sure why and it was because I wasn't pulling it out hard enough I was afraid that I was going to break it um, but it says that it needs to be firmly pulled out until it snaps and locks into place I was afraid of breaking it but um, I absolutely love this and it's not like top of the line expensive but it's it's absolutely fantastic. I can't say enough about it. I really do like it. Um, Gloria said, I love the blanket on Sandy's page. Got the first block done. Block for my youngest granddaughter. I do like um, some of her patterns. I think they are nice. Um, It's frustrating that some, you know, I understand why people share stuff only in their group and don't really have a public blog or like public Ravelry because so many people do steal patterns. Um, I know that we've had a few designers come to the group and get upset because they're, um, somebody posted something promoting them. And it is a paid pattern, and we are a free group. Um, so, you know, any of you guys that are designing something, if you guys are going to put it free on a blog, you know, and you want it, you know, and it's Tunisian or whatever, and it's on a, on a blog and it's free or um, something, let us know. Um, but... You know, I, I know to get your pattern out there, you have people post all over the internet the pattern and the link and that it's paid and this is the designer and this is what group you can get it in and we do have linked groups. Um, all of the Tunisian groups that I'm in are linked in our um, information about our group. Um, 
and it says like linked groups and all of the ones that I'm in um, are linked there um, but like I said I try to keep everything free here because a lot of people are just starting out and it is so hard to purchase yarn and purchase hooks and purchase you know everything that goes along with this that you want to do and then on top of that you know you see this and you see that and they're all paid I try to keep this this is more teaching um, and for free because I know when I started out I did not have a lot of money I was looking for something to do as like a getaway because I was younger you know and the younger crowd was partying and doing things that were destructive and I wanted something to do that wasn't going to ruin my life or cause addiction or you know I just did want to be a part of that and um, you know I understand that, that that's why a lot of people do come here not only are they learning but they don't have the money and that's why I try to keep everything that we offer here free um, and the people that we're promoting their stuff that has um, is on a blog and it's not necessarily in a group that you got to join because so many of the groups are like well you know they do Tunisian and then the next week they're doing regular crochet and then they're doing knitting and you know if you're trying to learn something it's very confusing because then you'll get the hang of it in Tunisian and you're just getting along and now they're doing a knitting project and you're like well crap I don't knit so you know we try to keep everything focused here um, for what you can do on Tunisian and we try to keep everything low cost and free because um, I know what it's like not to have oodles of money and um, you know it's it's hard and I know that you know I sympathize there are so many single parents out there and people struggling and that's why we have people that come forward that will gift hooks and gift things and and say you know hey I seen somebody made a post stating that they needed something and they've been active in the group so you know hey can I can I help out you know and that's what's great about this group is it's a big family everybody helps each other we do have you know people that step forward that donate hooks and people that donate yarn and you know donate books I mean it's it's been fantastic and yes it goes on behind the scenes and a lot of people don't want the recognition and don't want their name out there and but you know I absolutely can't say enough about how much I appreciate everybody that's been a yarn angel a hook angel you guys are all angels you know I love seeing all of your work I love to see you guys motivated I love knowing that you know the people in here are taking care of one another and that it's like a very close-knit family in here and that's super important to me you know because I'm one of the ones that I'll give you the shirt off my back if that's what you need and I can help you um, so you know thank you guys to every one of you I can't say it enough how much I appreciate you and how much I know you know I do know what it's like to go without and you know the fact that we've got people here that are going to step up and help out is fantastic and I, I appreciate it so much um, Mary Bailey said she loves them talking about the yarns Linda said likes cooks wish there was smell a vision you want to have color vision or feel a vision for those squishies I do um, Erica said black and hot pink I think that would look nice too. Um, hi Shirley. Gloria says she loves the groups. Chris says thank you for everything you do. Melissa said yarn addiction is something a healthy addiction. I know oh, oh too well and I appreciate all of your resources you provide. You guys are amazing. Thank you. And Lizzie gave hearts. Yeah um I'm super excited about these colors and showing you guys what I've learned and um, I think that you know all of us are a little bored right now and you know if you've got a couple extra bucks and can learn something this is quick and you know it doesn't take a lot of time ultimately you could even do this with your kids Lisa said a mustard color would be nice or a burnt orange. I was looking into that. My 
place does not have um, even the dark yellow. So um, I was a little disappointed in that. That's something that I'm probably going to have to buy two colors and mix together to get that um, that mustard color. But I, I really did think a mustard color would go great with the jewel tones. Hi, Angela. I just found out my new fur baby loves crocheted blankets, and this could be serious. What are you making now? Says husband. Nothing, honey. Just another blanket for Mia. My cat loves my blankets as well. Um, so, again, like I said, y'all, there will be a video on these colors and what I used and the difference between the red uh, wine colored and why it's more variegated and why these ones are more of a ombre and um, I will probably do some Hanks after I do this video on um, the cakes and um, if you want a dye that's deep and don't want to spend a lot of money ordering um, a thousand different colors, I do recommend the Rit Dye highly, and the Nomad Yarns is fantastic. Um, for the quality, I was kind of thinking, you know, these are only $6.90 for a hank um, for the Snowdrift and the Eggshell, and... Um, they're 100 grams, but they're 437 yards, which is a, a good bit. Um, I was really impressed with that because I do have some yarns that are only like 200 yards. And, you know, this is 437 yards. That's 400 meters. That's a lot of yarn, you know, on one of these. So I'm really impressed with that, too. And I'm really impressed with the feel. Like, I... I thought, you know, this is a cheaper yarn, and I'm going to try, you know, cheaper cost-wise. So I was kind of expecting cheaper feel-wise as well, and I was really impressed by the quality. It doesn't feel cheap. It's not scratchy. It's not, um, I can't complain about this yarn at all. I absolutely love it. I love it so much that I actually ordered um, two more bags of the Hanks, so I have like 20 more Hanks of yarn. So I will definitely be coloring more, more yarn. Um, and I'm, I'm loving the colors. Like I said, when it says indigo and it shows this dark on the label, that is exactly what you get. Um, so, yeah, the Nomad yarns are, they're great. And like I said, every, you know, I've seen some reviews where people are like, oh, the Rit dye, it smells. And it does have an odor to it. I'm not going to say it doesn't. Um, but... You know, with the addition of the soap and the vinegar, and these are dry. And like I said, I really got to put it up to my nose. I can't say, you know, oh, it's got an odor from here. It doesn't. Like, I really got to... Um, Gloria said, I forgot, is this DK weight? Actually, this is a fingering sock weight. Um, but this is... Let me see. This is the DK that we're using for the shawl, and this is the fingering, so it's, it's thinner, and it's going to need a smaller hook, but it is still nice, it's still, it's still got a nice thickness to it, um, is it the vinegar smell that people are noticing? No, I think they were just saying that the Rit dye has a, an odor to it. It does have a little bit of a smell. Like, it's nothing like, it's not an overpowering smell. Like, for instance, when I put the pot on the stove and you pour the water and the Rit dye and the vinegar in there, and this stuff boils for like, well, not really boils, it kind of simmers for 30 minutes. And... When you come into the house, you can smell it a little bit, but it's not like, oh my God, what's that smell? Um, so, I don't know. I kind of didn't get it, and like I said, I have very um, 70s 
sensitive sinuses. I will get a sinus migraine super easy with perfumes and stuff. So, uh, you know, you know, yes, it has an odor to it. I guess everything, you know, when you come down to it, everything has an odor to it. But I got to even clear up to my face. I can't really, it's, it's nothing like that. I don't, I don't get it, but. I thought I would mention it for those of you that are like, oh, God, she didn't mention it. Because, you know, there's one of them in every group that's got to point out something that you forgot. So I thought I'd mention it. But, um, like I said, I'm super, I'm super impressed with the dyes. And, you know, I was figuring, oh, you know, they're $3 for 8 ounces. So I'm probably going to have to use, like, 4 ounces. Um to do a skein, so five of them, I'm only going to be able to do like five skeins, or, and I, I'm really impressed, because it only takes two ounces to do the 100 gram skeins, so really that's four uses, and like I said, uh, the colors are so dark and everything that I really think I would have been able to put more in there and still get beautiful colors, or, you know, did the two and took them out and then put two more in to get a lighter color probably, but I don't know, I haven't tried it yet, but, um, you know, if somebody's interested, I will try it. <laughs> you know, for the for the for the sake of knowledge. <laughs> so, um, so if anybody's got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask here. Ask in the group. Um, message us if you know you're embarrassed about whatever's going on and you don't want to ask. Um, and everyone is so super helpful in here, and we always have new people every day. So don't think you're asking a question that's been asked a million times and you're bothering us because we all love to teach, and that's why we're all doing this. So, um, you know, don't be embarrassed. This is a teaching group. We're all here to learn, and we all have different things to, to learn and improve on and that we don't know. You know, I learn, try to learn something new every day and try something new every day. And that's what, you know, keeps life interesting. Um, Eric said dip dye. Yeah, I probably need to try that too. Um, what else? Oh, someone was mentioning about hooks. They're doing one of the um, swatch, um, not swatch, the cows that are going on, the Tunisian sampler cows. And they had to go up four different hook sizes. And I will say this again. Different people use different hook sizes to get different gauges because you are a lifter, a yanker, or a rider as a crocheter. Either your stitches are right along the top and kind of nice and relaxed, or you lift them up, which is where you pull them up kind of higher. And then the rest of us are yankers that yank the work down so then your stitch is kind of in front of the work, and that's why your work will curl extremely. Um, those type of people do need to go up four hook sizes to kind of get the same gauge that we get with a hook that's two sizes bigger if you're a rider. Or if you're a lifter, then a lot of times you can use a hook that's only one size bigger instead. Um, and still get the same gauge. So that's what's super important about, you know, well, somebody said that if I did, you know, 30 stitches or 32 stitches, it was going to be 8 inches, but yet mine is this and this hook and I got holes in my fabric. That is why I talk about gauge swatching so much. If you can pick your fabric up and you can see the holes and everything else through it and nobody else can or they're not getting you're not getting the same gauge or whatever then you need to go down a hook size or up a hook size and that little piece will teach you a lot um, a lot of times with Tunisian you do not need to go in and block a square um, because it doesn't really curl a lot you know yes Tunisian curls and you will get some curling, but you're not going to get a lot of curling if you're using the correct size hook. Yes, there are stitches that curl terribly, like the Tunisian knit stitch, but as long as you're getting gauge for a lot of these, you will be fine when you're doing blocks and putting them together. You don't really got to swatch, you know, you, you really, once you get a feel for the hooks, you're going to keep that. You're going to know what 
what you get, and you're going to know if you're a, a lifter, a yanker, or a rider. And I think the video that we post um, explains that perfectly, which is why I've never done a video, and it talks about it in such detail. And yes, it takes, a, yeah, I think it's like five minutes in where she starts to do the Tunisian one, but it's such a a wealth of knowledge. So, um, Angela said, it took me months before I stopped being a yanker. Linda said, I'm a yanker, too, working on that as well. Yeah, it takes a little bit. Tunisian, you, a lot of my local students, you know, I got to tell them a lot. You know, think about it as this is loose, it's relaxing. This is loose, it's relaxing. You know, and when you get into that and you're you're telling your brain that, then a lot of them will relax. And, you know, because, you know, first off, you're learning a new stitch. You're learning, a lot of people are learning to hold a hook a completely different way because they held the hook in a pencil hold. And even if you held in a knife hold, you know, now you're holding in the knife hold, but now you've got all these stitches, so, you know, then you're really upset, like, what if the stitches fall off the front, or, you know, I got, I got to keep pushing them back, you know, there's a lot of different components that go into Tunisian that are a lot to learn at first to pay attention to, and it makes people tense up, and you crochet tighter, and you're yanking your work down, and that's why a lot of people roll, and that is why a lot of people, too, have to go up several different hook sizes larger than a lot of other people and it's also one of the biggest things that i found and we do have a video in here and it is why yarning under with tunisian does not work yes there are some stitches that you have to yarn under for i am not saying this be there is an exception to every rule but for the most part tunisian you do not yarn under because what happens is when you yarn over, you put the yarn over your hook, then you're grabbing the yarn and you're pulling through. You have all of this yarn that went over the hook to work with. When you yarn under, you only have this little bit of yarn that you grab to pull so your stitches aren't going as high and they're being much more dense. And we have had a few people in here that are complaining, you know, hey, I'm using, you know, a hook that's like, eight times bigger to get the gauge that you're getting and I'm like are you yarning under oh yeah and once they actually stop and do a practice piece where they constantly are saying you know yarn over <laughs> yarn over then that's when they get that their piece has relaxed and that they're getting a much different gauge and that makes a huge difference because so many people you know, there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't any of this when a lot of us learned to crochet. We learned to crochet from our grandmothers and our great-grandmothers, and they learned from, you know, books and, and things, you know, clear back to, you know, hundreds of years ago. And it's super important, you know, that you, and especially to those that have gone from Amy Garami to Tunisian crochet or regular crochet. Because Amy Garami, when you yarn under, you get that tighter stitch and you don't get the holes that are so that your stuffing's not coming through and it works out perfect. But when you do Tunisian crochet, unless a stitch specifically says to yarn under, please, please, please yarn over. It will make your work so much taller and so much more relaxed and it makes a huge, huge difference. And that's why, too, you know, I like to... You know, Erica and I are going to do the resources with the books. Um, and what is a good, what are the best books that we've bought? And um, that will help you guys too. Because I know so many people, you know, complain, Oh, I went on YouTube and I looked up, um, I'll use the Moss Stitch for example. I looked up the moss stitch on YouTube, and it's the same stitch as the honeycomb stitch. But then I went on YouTube, and I looked up the moss stitch, and I found another person that did it, and it's done as, like, the single crochet moss stitch where you are going to go through the stitch and, you know, like, knit one. Then you're going to 
yarn over, skip a stitch. So it's done just like the single crochet one and it gives a completely different look, but it's got the same name. It's got the same name because so many different people are going and they're, they're following YouTube videos or because so many Tunisian books um, will say like, this is stitch number 32 and stitch number 32 doesn't have a name. So then somebody will name it on their video the same thing that another stitch is already called because they don't know or because this is the way that they've been doing it. And I think that's why a lot of people get confused with YouTube videos. So, like, it just depends on um, what source you've learned from. And that's why I like to go to all of the books and look around and find out what book suits or what book has the stitch in it. And I try to refer to that personal book and what the number is, even if it's just a number, like it'll say stitch number 52, uh, because that way you guys can go out and find the resource, but you can also see how it's done and you know what it looks like. So that way it's, it might be the moss stitch that's the one that has the yarn over instead of the moss stitch that's done like the honeycomb. And I think that makes a huge difference. Um, because they're, they're really, the Tunisian standards are kind of getting there. Um, CGOA and um, the Yarn Council, like all of that, it's, it's getting some stitch, um, oh, the word just escaped my brain. Um, you know, there's a, there's a standard for, you know, the double crochet and there's a standard, there's not necessarily a standard for a lot of the Tunisian stitches yet. And I think that's what makes some of the patterns confusing as well. And, um, I'm super excited about that. Like I said, the Tunisian get together, um, that's down in South Carolina is going to be exciting because, um, I think that's one of the things that we're going to work on is um, the patterns that are going to be graphed out. Um, there's more of a there are, are some really good um, programs out now where you can actually design and go in and like, if you're doing a granny square, you can go in and you can put that information in to get that pattern. And you can also do it in a lot of the graph patterns now where you can go in and like the um, cross stitch ones, you can go in and you can add symbols for what the stitch is going to be. And I think that that's going to be something that we're going to work on when um, we go down there to do that. Strange, because because Tunisian has been around for a very long time. Yes, it has, and that's what I was saying earlier. Um, you know, it's got so many different names, and it's been around for so long. And you know, as I said, some of the books that I have are so old. You know, and that's you know that's the thing too about you know fortune being fortunate enough that books are passed down from grandmother to you know mom to to child and you know, all of them resources and the writing, some of the writing in them is, is very much different than today's writing. So you really got to pay attention when you're reading. <laughs> um, it's very old school, uh, language. So I thought that was kind of interesting as well. Um, and I think Tunisian's getting a whole new school too. I mean, I, was just discussing with Erica that some of the loom knit patterns are actually referring to some of the stitches as a Tunisian rib stitch and stuff like that. So that's going to be interesting to um, be talking about and looking over to uh, in South Carolina. So um, and like I said, too, we will also be getting the resource page together that has all of the books that we've bought and the, you know, 
which ones we kind of rank um, the highest that we thought were the most helpful for beginning that has the most number of stitches that you can learn and you know I think that's going to be extremely helpful for the group as well um, I'm hoping that the Tunisian getaway um, that we do next year will be much bigger um, a lot of things got canceled because of states being closed and you know the the crochet guild of america they had their big um conference gonna be it was going to be the end of july down in louisiana and i was looking forward to going to that and that's canceled and um i'm waiting to see if some of the they were talking about doing some classes online by video and then some were saying that the classes were going to be too difficult if it was just a video. So I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to do. Um, if not, then I may fly out to the one in Denver next year um, since I'm on the East Coast. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, I will be getting the video up. Hi, Connie. I will be getting the video up for the dyeing of the yarns um, so that we can do that and that you guys can follow along with that and do that together. Connie says, hi, I'm so late. It'll be up for you to rewatch. But you did miss the beautiful yarns. Look. I don't want you to miss the yarn. This is what I dyed, and we're going to be talking about that, and there's going to be a tu tu tutorial. Fly hell, we're driving. I don't think my car will drive that far. Um, so, if there's no more questions, um, like I said, I absolutely love the Knitter's Pride hooks. I can't say enough about them. The Chiagu is who I go with for the larger hooks that are the jumbo hooks. Um, and there is a chart in our group that Erica posted earlier that talks about the jumbo hooks. Um, I went by the most popular that Chiagu have because I have bought from them. They are reasonably priced and um, they follow the standards more than some other um, hook sizes that I've found. Um, so that's why I really like the Chiago for the Jumbo. I really do like them. Um, what else? If you guys don't have the blockers, don't panic. You don't need them for what we're going to be doing for the shawl, but if you would like to get them, um, you can shop around online. But like I said, um, there are a few places you can get them that they are. I think mine were, let's see, mine were $24.39. Handsome Fibers on Facebook is who I got, who I ordered through. And they also have a the Handsome Fibers group on Ravelry. And the shipping was fast. Everything came packaged fantastic. Um, I was super happy with them. And uh, so I'm excited about that. And in the meantime, uh, Blueprint had a sale on their stuff and had Cloudborn Prima Cotton Jewel. They had, you could order a kit or whatever and it was like 15% off, but if you ordered within a certain day, then you got like an extra 15% off. So I ordered a cotton because I wanted to make a summer top. So 
I ordered, because I love jewel tones, I ordered these. And there is a gunmetal gray and a light purple and then a like a peacock blue and a deep deep purple and then this is like a teal and these are 100% prima cotton these are a size 3 and um, a machine wash cold gentle cycle hand wash normal do not wring and lay flat to dry. And I knew that when I ordered that. That's why I said I'm going to be making something for me. So I was super excited about that. I ended up getting this for like 20 bucks. So I thought that was a pretty good steal. But um, we got the deep purple, a teal. Stormy Skies, Grape, and Pewter. And like I said, these were absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm super excited about them and using them as well because I wanted a, a nice summer top. Gotta go. Have a great rest of your week and weekend. I will see you, Gloria, and uh, we will be here next Wednesday. Thank you, guys. Um, and like I said, um, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. The uh, yarn dyeing video and everything else will be up on YouTube, and we will post links everywhere. And um, like I said, there I know that there are a few designers that have gotten in touch with me that have blogs and free Tunisian things going on right now. If you have a blog, uh, let me know, and we will post your free patterns. Um, so don't hesitate to let me know if you have something free on your blog that is Tunisian. And um, I would like to say thank you to Knitter's Pride and to Nomad Yarns for fantastic yarn and hooks. So... All of you have a great evening. If you guys got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask or message me. And I will see you next Wednesday, if not sooner. Bye, guys.